There are 1 million monkey head in this scene. Basically what I did here, I created a scene with a monkey head. I set the visibility range to 200 meter, so this will disappear beyond this distance. After that, I instantiate 1 million of these randomly in my scene. Here the frame rate is around 140 fps, but it should be more than this. The main bottleneck here is not GPU. Basically we have one menu monkey head, but we don't show all of them. We basically show only those which are 200 meter away from the camera. The main bottleneck here is CPU, because the CPU is calculating the distance of each of these objects to the camera one by one. And unfortunately, this is how Godot visibility range works. So what I did here is that I implement an octary system to calculate which object should be shown or not. Basically, I have created another node which is called mOctMesh, which can be used instead of Mesh Instance 3D. So this is the same scene with 1 million monkey head. This time, instead of Mesh Instance 3D, I used mOctMesh node. You can see here I got around 1400 FPS almost 10 times more than before. Beside that, previously with Mesh Instance 3D, I used over 5 GB of RAM memory, but this time I only use more than 2 GB of RAM memory. MOctMesh performs much better than the regular Mesh Instance 3D in great quantity. But this is not the end of the story for creating a large world in Godot. I will tell you why later in this video. Basically, after making my train plugin, I struggle a lot to populate my train especially for very large world. So let's see what we have in our 3D world, especially in very large one. Our 3D world contain a lot of points in different places. This point can represent anything. It can be a mesh, it can be a sound, or even it can be an enemy spawner. So what we need to do here is to calculate which point are closer to us. So first we need to create a system which takes a lot of points and then it calculates which points are closer to the camera. And that system should do this job really fast. I chose the OCT3 algorithm for this purpose. Now each of these system below need to do something or activate something when the camera get close to their point. The thing is we don't want to calculate the distance of the camera to each of these points one by one. So we create an octary system which can handle these things very fast. Octary divides a space into different regions. It has a root which is just a boundary in 3D space. That root can be divided into 8 different regions and each of these regions also can be divided to 8 more regions too. And inside each of these regions we have a bunch of points. I'm not going to explain how octary system works, I just explain how this system implemented here. So first, each of these system register themselves into octary. They call a function in octary which is called getOctID and octary will give them an ID so they can communicate with octary with that ID. Basically with octID, we can differentiate between different system points in our octary. After this, each of these system will send a bunch of points with their corresponding IDs into octary. So the first step is done. One other important thing that we need to do is to set a LOD level distance inside our oak tree. For example, we set all point less than 10 meter distance from the camera to LOD 0, between 10 and 15 meter to LOD 1, and so on. Then when the game loop starts, oak tree also starts to work to see which of these points are closer to the camera. It calculates the LOD level of each point in a different CPU thread, but it is super fast. It takes less than 1 millisecond to calculate the LOD level of millions of points. Anyway, after finishing each update, it sends a signal to all of its subsystem and it will tell them that the update is finished. Each of the subsystem will look into the oak tree and see which points LOD has been changed. If the LOD level of the point stays the same, it does not need an update. So the oak tree will inform only those points which are changed. Now at this time, all of the subsystem start to work to update their points with the new LOD. When they finish updating, they inform oak tree that they finished. And oak tree will wait until all of its subsystem finish updating. And after that, start to run another update. And this loop repeat again and again during the game. This is basically how this works. And up to now, I just created a mOctMesh which 
can be used instead of Mesh Instance 3D on top of this system. But my goal is to make more stuff on top of this. So let's see how we can use this system. This system is on top of my mtrain plugin. So first download the latest version of mtrain plugin and activate that as a plugin. Here, as I said, we have an oct mesh node. Let's add that to my scene. Also here, I prepare Suzanne mesh with different LOD level in Blender. Here, when I import this mesh, I deactivate Godot automatic LOD system for this, as I want to set LOD mesh manually. Okay, now that I just imported this mesh, I just create a mesh LOD resource in my Oct mesh, and then I assign each mesh with the corresponding LOD level. But you can see nothing will appear on the screen. The reason is that we have not created our oak tree system yet. This is not too difficult. Let me show you how you can build an oak tree system. First, create a script. Change the inheritance of that script to M oak tree. Also, activate tool mode for that so it will work inside the editor. Now, inside the ready function, I enable this as oak mesh updater. Basically, we can have multiple oak tree, but only one of them can update oak mesh and you can use each of these oak tree for different purpose after this i set some lod level for this also for now i enable debug draw so i can see my oak tree boundary now you need to add this script as a singleton and just restart the code out. now you can see my oak mesh is working let me assign a material to that i can do mostly everything that i do with regular mesh instant to this I can duplicate that and as you can see there is a blue boundary which shows my octree system. There are just few limitation with this oct mesh node. One of them is that it currently does not work with light map baking and also it does not work with the voxel GI. For now you can use only with the global illumination lighting. Now if I duplicate more of my monkey head you can see my tree divide itself and as I move the monkey my tree structure will change with this. What if I move the monkey outside of the root boundary? You can see my oak tree root boundary will increase and adapt itself. When this happens, oak tree will destroy itself and recreate itself from a start. This is not too much a heavy process, but you can avoid that by setting a boundary to your world. Here in my script for oak tree, I set the boundaries to my world and I set the lower and the higher point in each axis like this. There is another thing and that when you remove a oak mesh, the oak tree will not merge again. This is not a bug and this happens only in editor. Basically because in editor you have an undo system, the point will not remove immediately so you can undo that easily like this. Octmesh is not a complete replacement for Mesh Instance 3D. And there are some situations when you want to use Mesh Instance 3D. In situation when your mesh does not need different LOD level. One example is the player mesh. Usually the player mesh is always close to the camera and you don't need LOD for that. Also don't use that for things which you want to add and remove a lot of time in your game. Like the bullet mesh. And this is basically how Oct Mesh work, but this is not the end of the story. We still have problem with creating a large world in Godot. The main reason for this is the node system in Godot. You saw when we created 1 million points with Oct Mesh, it took almost 2 GB of memory. And this is not acceptable. The simplest node in Godot takes more than 1 KB of memory. Also, it needs to be processed. But imagine if we remove that node, how much information do we need to show a mesh in 3D scene? We need a 3D transform and some minimal information about the material and geometry of the mesh. I think to create a big world, we need to remove the need for nodes. Maybe we can bake a bunch of node information into one node. Beside that, we need a HLOD system for that which merge meshes when they get further away. Unreal and Unity both they have this system. But let me know what do you think about this thing. At last, I want to thank all of my Patreon who helped me all of this time. I really appreciate your help. And let's see what will happen until the next video. Have a good time and bye.